What is going on everybody? Welcome back, MTG here with another episode. If you're new to the channel, hi there. So this is the M2 MacBook Air in Midnight. It's a fingerprint magnet. I literally just cleaned this and wiped this right before I started this video. Anyway, eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. This is the base model. And I'm telling you guys in the beginning of the video. So moving forward, you know exactly what I'm talking about uh, with this specific configuration. And I've had it since July of 2022, its initial launch. And I wanna share my thoughts and opinions about this device and who is it for six months later? So without further delay, let's dive right in. I'm gonna first start off with design of the MacBook Air. This is one of my favorite things about this M2 MacBook Air is the design, it's a more flat and squared off. It's not wedge shaped anymore like the previous MacBooks were. Um, and it's kind of in line with the MacBook Pros and the iPads and the iPhones and all that, pretty much Apple's entire product lineup. But this right here, it's very easy, very light to hold as well. And also MagSafe right here. MagSafe comes in clutch and it saves up some extra ports, which we got two USB-C Thunderbolt ports. Um, and the reason why I say it saves extra ports is like, let's say I wanna charge my MacBook and also use a USB-C, now I have that option. Whereas before, with my previous MacBook Pro, I had a 2017 Intel version and I was using USB-C to charge the MacBook, but then I'd have to use like a separate dongle to charge it and to, it was just a hassle. So just having this separately to charge and then USB-C is great. Now it doesn't have an SD uh, card slot like the MacBook Pros, but I'm used to it. I'm okay, because now I can just use USB-C to hook up my Sony A7 Mark III to the M2 MacBook Air. So that's, that's still a plus for me. Anyway, there's also a headphone jack on the right side, which is useful for those who need it. I haven't used it, I'll be honest, I haven't used it once at all. Now, let's say you did forget your MagSafe charger, you can still use the USB-C port to charge it. So that's also a plus, like you just wanna carry one cable to charge your devices, well, other than the iPhone right now, which rumors are saying iPhone 15 is going to have USB-C, but until then, you gotta carry two ports if you use an iPhone or MagSafe. Anyway, keyboard on the M2 MacBook Air. Now, I'd like to preface that I am a student right now. This is my last year, actually my last semester at the time of this recording uh, as a college student, but I also make tech videos. So I have this YouTube channel and I use this as my main machine. I don't use an M2 Max or M2 Pro, the newly announced MacBook Pros. I haven't ordered them for the channel, maybe in the future when the channel grows and hopefully it does with all of your support. But I can tell you that this has performed like a champ. And I'm going to get to uh, software and performance in a little bit. Now, let's talk about this keyboard. It's great. I love this keyboard. I'm a huge fan, especially of Touch ID, because uh, now I can log into uh, my M2 MacBook Air. And also, like if I need to, I don't need to write any passwords anymore. I just use my Touch ID and I'm all set to go. My previous MacBook Pro didn't have that, so it's just a huge lifesaver. It just saves like an extra 10 seconds, 30 seconds, but it does add up. Now, looking at the screen of the M2 MacBook Air, the screen at first, for me, it was an eyesore because of this right here, because of that notch. However, I mean, I've had it since July. I've gotten used to the notch. And I'm gonna be honest here too, I kind of like it. I know, I mean, it's just like, why is there a notch? But then at one point I sat down and compared this to my old MacBook Pro, and I was like, wow, this makes a huge difference. I really do like it. However, there is one thing that I hope one day Apple will do, and that is to bring Face ID to their MacBook lineups. Whether it's MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, as long as they have a notch, please add Face ID. Now, one thing I do regret is purchasing the Midnight Color. When it was first unveiled, I was like, this is, this is a really, really nice color. But, I mean, I can see it in person, maybe you can see it on camera. It's, it's a huge fingerprint magnet. It's a huge fingerprint magnet. I'm not a fan of this at all. So that's just one of my regrets. I wish I kind of went with a different color, probably gonna go with like a gold or just a space gray just to keep it safe. 
But yeah, that's one. That's my main regret with M2 MacBook Air is just the color of choice. Other than that, everything about it is great. This 13.6 inch screen is perfect for me. However, rumors are suggesting a larger M2 MacBook Air. Um, so that may be on the horizon, of course, none of that is confirmed. But for me, this has been easy to carry and the design is just feels much more modern. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, let's get into the actual usage. So, like I said, I've had this since July of 2022. I've been using it for uh, my school career and I've been using it as a YouTuber to make these tech videos and I haven't had any slowdowns, any issues in speed, none of that stuff. It's tackled everything um, and has conquered pretty much every single task I've thrown at it with a breeze. No issues whatsoever. Now I have the base model with the slower SSD and I'm gonna be straightforward. I haven't noticed, noticed any issues in speed. I don't do speed tests or benchmarks, so I can't really go into nitpicking, go into the details of those stuff, but it's performed a hundred times better than my 2017 Intel MacBook Pro, which also was eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Um, there is one downside that could be like the one downside that I can nitpick because I mean, I'm using this every single day and that is the storage. I kind of wish I went for 512 because 256 does add up quickly. However, if I was just using this as a college student, I can guarantee 256 gigs of storage would be perfectly fine as well. So do take note, if you're going to use this just for every day, you're not gonna use it for photo editing, video editing. I think 256 gigs is a great uh, starting for, or starting storage for this M2 MacBook Air, just for everyday use. You know, whether you're going to be using it uh, to surf the web, watch content like these YouTube videos, use it for Gmail, uh, use it for Google Docs or Microsoft PowerPoints or for Zoom calls, It'll handle all that with a breeze, but as soon as you start getting into kind of uh, photo editing, video editing, maybe coding, or things that do require more storage, then I would consider upping to a higher model, a higher configuration. But for this one, 256 gigs will tackle the daily task. This is one thing I can nitpick about, uh, but otherwise when it comes to like usage in general, I edit three to four streams of 1080p on this M2 MacBook Air and my workload isn't too heavy. So it's obviously not 4K. I'm not adding too many uh, different effects um, and it's great. Now it doesn't have a fan inside. So you might wonder what happens if it gets too hot. Well, I'll tell you, it hasn't gotten hot at all. Like hot to the touch. My previous MacBook Pro, I couldn't take it out of the charger. And as soon as I opened Final Cut Pro, just bring in one stream of 1080p footage into the timeline, it would start heating up and the fan would kick in and it was just a, it was a hassle. So I'm really glad that this M2 MacBook Air does not show any thing that my previous MacBook Pro did. Super happy with uh, this purchase. Let's jump back into my schoolwork. Now I am in my last year uh, majoring in technology management. Uh, so most of my current classes, they're based on business and management. And thankfully, and I'm really grateful for this, that I can use the things I learn uh, from my major on the YouTube channel and vice versa. Uh, so this M2 MacBook, I mean, it requires the use of Microsoft Office for my school classes and Google Suites. Uh, and I think that for those in the business field and IT, I can tell you that the M2 MacBook Air is a machine you can rely on super fast and has no hiccups whatsoever. Um, and I'm just sitting here looking at this device right now. It is pretty much, this is the go-to student device. You may want to pick up a refurbished M1 MacBook Air, but remember, this is, it's a newer design. Um, if I personally was to put an M1 in MacBook Air and suggest either one or two, I still would go M2. It's got the newer chipset. It's going to last a little bit longer and it's got the much you know newer design if you're into that newer design. Uh, I still would say for me, uh, most times in my experience, newer is a little bit better. Not always better, just a little bit better. Uh, so daily usage M2 MacBook Air has been great. I'm not throwing any numbers out there. I'm just sharing 
my experience with you all. Now let's talk about pricing with this. So M2 MacBook Air, my base model is eight gigs, 256 gigs of storage. And I bought mine with the education discount during that back to school season. And uh, total, I paid $1,024 with a promotional savings included. So that's pretty good. The regular price is $1,199 for the base model. So I highly recommend using the education discount. And I would personally say that this base model is sufficient for many. And those who are starting off college um, later on in the summer, or who are in college right now starting off their semester, they wanna get a new computer, they wanna get into the Apple ecosystem, I think this is it. Use that education discount to get $100 off. However, if you want a more spec M2 MacBook Air, uh, these 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of SSD for $1479 education price is the highest I would recommend for M2 MacBook Air. Anything higher, I think, is now entering MacBook Pro territory in which I can then say, if you're going to spend well over $1,500, $1,600 for a machine to use as your daily, I would say go towards a refurbished M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Now that the M2 Pro and M2 Max are out, those are going to be on sale even more. You're going to be able to find them much cheaper. So anything, um, I would go as much as paying at the very max $1,500 for this, anything more. I personally will be going for a MacBook Pro. That's just my personal opinion and recommendation. Now, I kind of wish the base model of this M2 MacBook Air was $999 and they got rid of the M1, but they didn't. We still have M1 for $999 and this right here is going to be $1199, but really what can you do? It's right here. So pricing, it could be better, uh, but make sure you use the educational discount to get the best of the M2 MacBook Air. Now I know there's one thing I didn't talk about yet and that is going to be uh, battery life. So M2, this right here, this machine battery life is great. I love it, absolutely love it. For me, battery life is like a really important thing on my machines, especially since I was always stuck to a outlet using my MacBook Pro to edit videos. I literally can't go anywhere unless I know that there is an outlet. So it was kind of a bummer, but with this, I can leave my MagSafe charger, I can leave my USB-C charger, take this with me to my local Starbucks, sit down, edit a video from start to finish, browse the web, get some homework done, have my coffee, get back home, get into the office, get into my workflow, sit, uh, sit my desk, open it up, and I'll still have lots of charge and there was at one point where i was able to edit a video of for youtube export it upload it to youtube and i had 85 percent battery left that was from 100 and uh, it did take you know a couple hours but in the end i still had 85 percent of battery my macbook pro my previous one would not have lasted so that's just a real life experience that i i went through Super happy with the battery life. I don't need to worry about it. I can forget my charger with me for the day. Like if I forget it, I'm comfortable. Like I'm comfortable knowing that I didn't bring it with me. It lasts about four days on light usage of just browsing the web or if you're going to write articles, for example, on Medium or on Google Suites, whatever it is. Uh, standby time is awesome too. About one to 2% overnight. So again, it's not crazy at all. However, the charging I did mention earlier is great. MagSafe, we have MagSafe, frees up a USB-C port. And you can also use a USB-C port if you need to. You forget your MagSafe, you only have your USB-C cable for your other devices, you can also charge up the MacBook Air. Now charging is pretty fast if you have the 65 watt charger, but if you don't, then the other, you know, the lower watt chargers are also pretty decent as well. I'm not too uh, picky about the charging speeds because most of the time when I'm going to sit down and charge my MacBook Air, it's not like I'm in a rush. I need to charge it real quick and leave. I'll either charge it at night or charge it as I'm doing work. So I'm not in that rush of having any fast charging speeds. Obviously having fast charging speeds does 
and it is great, but it's just something that I don't look for, uh, particularly in the M2 MacBook Air. So if anyone here is wondering, how's the battery life? Well, I can tell you, lasts me all day. Literally, I took this out this morning, edited a video, I didn't upload, and I, I did some, uh, I did write some articles on Medium, browse the web, watch some videos. I'm at 80% and I took this out around like eight in the morning. It's 4.51 at the time of this recording. This is great, absolutely great. Now, whether you're a college student or a upcoming YouTuber, doesn't necessarily need to be a tech YouTuber or necessarily a student who's majoring in business, IT, technology management. Um, definitely you can find um, your workflow work with the M2 MacBook Air. That's just what my experiences I've been able to share with you guys, whether you're in that business or IT field, I know that this will get the job done. For me, it's tackled everything I've thrown at it, from video editing on a Final Cut Pro, which I do the most on this machine, and which was the sole reason, like the actual main reason why I bought this. I was in dire need of a new machine for Final Cut Pro, for the channel. So from video editing on Final Cut Pro to writing scripts uh, for the channel or writing bullet points to making PowerPoints for my school projects, I am able to rely on this machine. Now I know Apple is uh, announcing new products like the M2 Mac Mini and the M2 Pro Mac Mini and also the M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pro. Those are really tempting as well and I would love to pick them up and review them. But for me, I think I'm going to stick with the M2 MacBook Air um, longer than I had originally anticipated. So yeah, I was originally thinking M2 MacBook Pro or at least the MacBook Pro lineup, but this gets all the work done for me. I don't need anything more powerful. I'm not doing anything too heavy on it. Uh, so if you're in that same boat like me, you're just gonna, you're not a heavy user uh, with a laptop as your daily device. I think, actually, no, I don't think, I truly believe that this is the machine for you. I'm really, really happy with my purchase. And I can't wait to see what Apple brings next with M3. And please, I hope just one thing, you don't make the colors as fingerprint magnety as the midnight. So yeah, there's that. But that's really been it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to superman that like button, comment down below, and best of all, share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot. It will help push my content out to more people. That's been it for me, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.